I remember asking my 10-year-old, do you know what I do? And she said, of course I do. Uh, you work for the future. Design for the future means to be very intentional. I think that right now there's a lot of anticipation uh, as if like waiting for the future to happen to you. Whereas I, I think a future more as something being much more proactive. We're living in a period of time where we have never seen so much ability to access knowledge. People have a voice, so they can share their ideas far easier than they had before. All of these things are allowing us to innovate in a way that we have never, ever innovated before. We started Futurities in the midst of the pandemic. We've noticed is that a lot of companies aren't equipped to be proactive about this. We thought, let's create a company where we can help other companies to be able to build their ability to, to design for futures. We have been working on this device called the remote body control. It has these pads that will attach on one hand of one individual, say me, and then there are another set of sensors that will be connected to you. And what happens is that I could then record my muscle movement and then play it back at you, which will make you move the way I move. Essentially, making you my avatar. <laughs> the resolution is still very low, meaning that the whole entire muscle will move, right? You don't really have fine tune as to like this finger or that finger. But in the future, you can, as this technology has become more and more advanced, right? People are already using this for uh, people who are, who've been paralyzed and wanted to be able to walk again or, or use their arms and, and whatnot. So there are already applications in this. There is this uh, technology in OpenAI called GPT-3. And GPT-3 is, you know, think of it as a general artificial intelligence. You will be able to give it uh, a text, for example. And then you can say, My name is Mark. Nice to meet you, Mark. What can I help you with today? How has the conference been? What they said was join us online for IWDK's 2021 opening event. Mm -hmm. These are called digital people and made by a company called Soul Machines. They have developed these hyper-realistic avatars. We basically took descriptions from the website and from the transcripts and then uh, gave those summaries to this, uh, the digital person. And it learned all of this data up until 2018, all the data in the whole entire world. So we see applications in this where, you know, we wanted to know, for example, could we use this for elderly care so that it will take on the persona of someone that they're familiar with? Could you use this for teaching so that we can speak the language of the students to increase engagement? Food is a major topic for us. One of my interests in food is this uh, separation, what I call decoupling. What if you could have taste without eating? Our bodies run on electricity, so you can induce some of the taste with electricity. I mean, if you imagine how the VR is growing, that could be one application, right? G getting to taste the virtual world. Sour. This is vapor hall. If you take drinking alcohol, what if you could inhale it? You still have some alcohol, but you don't have calories, so then you can add different scents. And it's also really fun. The interesting part is that once you've separated these things, you can recombine them in new ways. You know, a, a different smell with a different texture, with a different chewiness. I wholeheartedly believe that we now have the tools and abilities to be proactive about uh, future making. I envisioned my work and a lot of my colleagues' work to, to be able to build better futures, not just for myself, but for you know everyone. I don't even just mean humans. I don't always know that I can do something. What I do know is that there's always something that I can learn in the process of making it.